Hello everyone, welcome back to Circus Tutorials. In today's video, we're going to teach you something that you can do with things you have laying around your house, and that is going to be how to spin a ball on your finger. So before we get to the steps of learning how to spin a ball, we're going to have to get a ball to spin. Now really you can use any sort of ball that you can hold in your hand. A lot of people use these balls that you can get from stores like Walmart or Target, uh, but they usually do come very inflated. You can see I can barely get my hand on that. So a lot of times when, I like, when I'm practicing, I like deflating them a bit so that way I can get a better grip. So I'm using these, these are um, mini exercise balls. The reason I like these is just because it has a removable knob so that way I can deflate it and inflate it just for ease of storage and transport. But again, you can use anything. I learned with a basketball, which if you're going to learn with a basketball, find one that's not super grippy because it will ruin and make that tip of your finger very, very sore. Once we have a ball selected, we are ready to learn how to spin a ball on our finger and it only comes down to three simple steps. Now that we have a ball selected, we are ready to start with step number one, which is just going to be spinning it and catching. Spin, catch. So before we get too far into it, you're going to need to decide on a way to spin it. There's three different ways you can spin it. Most jugglers do it this way, where they'll hold it in one hand and spin it in towards themselves. So you can think that it's going to the opposite shoulder, and that's the direction it's going to spin. The other way, the way basketball players do it, is where they'll actually go out the reason for this is because once it's spinning, you can use your other hand to accelerate it. So that's why it's a common choice. That's how I used to do it until I learned in, and then I liked that way a lot better and got much better at it. Or if your hands are small, you're going to have to use both hands. The way you do this is one hand on one side, one on the other, and kind of do like a scissoring motion that way. So one goes forward, one goes back. Once you find a way that's comfortable that you want to start practicing, we're gonna start practicing. And what we're looking for is two things. One is that spinning very fast. The faster it's spinning, the better it's going to be. Because the faster it's spinning, the longer it'll stay on our finger and the more stable it will be. The other thing that we're looking for is that it's nice and flat. So we don't wanna be spinning it crooked like this. That's going to make it very difficult to catch. We want it nice and flat. So if your ball has stripes, you can hold it at the bottom so that way you can see that it's spinning nice and flat or if it has different colors. Some people I've even seen where they'll draw a line in marker. So if you have the ball floating water, so you know which way is the bottom, draw a line in marker, so that way you can really see that spinning nice and flat. Either way, any way that you wanna do it, the trick is nice and fast and flat. Now practice this a lot. This is going to be the most important step of getting a really fast spin, but don't practice it too much. Practice it in moderation or over a longer course of like five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, rather than one longer session. The reason for this is it does put a lot of strain on your fingers, wrist, elbow, shoulder, like all this is working at once. And so if you're doing a lot, you'll find that your fingers and elbow really start to hurt. So moderation, work on it in smaller increments, nice and flat. And with that, once it's being nice and flat, we are ready for step number two. Step number two. So step number two is not spinning the ball at all, but we're, what we're doing is a little toss and trying to cushion it on our finger. So cushion, cushion. The reason for this is because we're going to need to be able to catch it on our finger. We don't want it bouncing off like that. If it bounces, you're not cushioning it. So what we're trying to do is as the ball is coming down, we're coming down at almost the same speed as the ball. So that way it catches nice and soft on our finger, no bounce. Whoop something like that. One thing that makes this easier is using your legs as well. You can use your legs to come down with it. And if you can catch it and balance it for just a second, you don't actually like need to balance it by any means, but just where it stays there for just a second without bouncing, that's going to be what we're looking for. So that's gonna be step number two. Unlike step number one, you can practice this one as much as you want. You're not going to get sore in the fingers or wrists or anything from doing this, so just catch. Try to balance it for just a second. And that's going to be step number two. We're almost there, we're already on step number three. Step number three is just going to be putting step number one and two together. So now that we can spin it nice and flat and catch it 
without too much bounce. We're gonna put them both together. So once you're spinning it, there's a spot that spins really, really tight. You can think of it as the north and south pole in the ball. We're going to try to catch our finger right in that point. Some balls will have a better time if you're a little bit off of naturally recentering than others. Others, you have to be really precise. If it's a really hard ball, it's going to be a lot more precise than if it's something uh, that's softer and a little squishy. But again, you can use anything that's round. I've seen people use anything from giant beach balls all the way down to little two and a half inch rubber balls. Just takes practice. So now we're going to put it together. We're gonna to spin it and try to do that cushion. And that's all it's going to take to be able to spin a ball on your finger. From there, it's just going to take practice. And like I said, spinning it fast is going to be the key here. If it's spinning slow, so it'll probably look a little more like this for most of you starting out or it'll really wobble quite a bit. A little bit of a spin, really wobble, and have to fight quite a bit to stay on the finger. And that's okay, that's how it starts. But then as you get stronger and as you get faster, get the technique better, then you'll be able to spin it faster and it'll stay on your finger by itself much more naturally. So practice step number one, a lot but not too much, we don't wanna get injured. Get the hang of step number two and start working on putting it together for step number three. And with that, that's going to be the tutorial on how to spin a ball on your finger. It really is that simple. It's just those three steps, getting it spinning nice and fast and flat, catching on your finger with minimum bounce, and then putting those two steps together. The most important step is going to be practicing step number one, getting that spinning very, very quickly and nice and flat for consistency. Because if it's spinning slow, again, it'll slide off your finger. The faster it's going, the more stable it'll be. So just get it spinning nice and fast. That's the most important part. If you like this video and want to see more like it, we can do more in the future. Just let us know that that's something you like to see. We can do different tricks of under the arm, multiple balls at the same time, or even stacked on top of each other, which is a great trick as well. Do all the YouTube things. It's not your first time here. You know what to do. And if you have progress videos, take some, we'd love to see them, share them with us on Facebook, and we'll check those out as well. And with that, I have been Chuck Clark with Circus Tutorials, and we'll see you in the next one. Oh,